Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope that you're ready today to bake some tie-dye cookies. This recipe is super easy. I'll walk you through it. But let me just tell you real quick exactly what you're going to need. You'll need butter, sugar, and flour. That's it, just those three things. You'll also need a couple of tools to be baking with. You're going to need a big bowl, really, really tall. You'll also need a hand mixer, and you're going to need a grown-up. You're gonna to have to have one of those hanging around because they will be turning on and preheating the oven to 325 degrees. Now, I have to tell you, I've already done a little bit of baking before chatting with you here, and while my cookies turned out perfectly the other day, ding, what you'll notice is, in a little bit, I'll be putting cookies on a cookie tray. When I do, I put my cookies a little bit too close together. Do you wanna see what they look like? I just took them out of the oven. Okay, brace yourself. Ta-da! <laughs> so, when you see me in just a couple of minutes putting my cookies on my cookie tray, this is what you want to make sure that you don't do. Don't put your cookies too close together because they grow or expand or whatever you want to call it in the oven. And if they're too close, you'll end up with a tie-dye cookie blob, which is all kinds of cute, but it might not be exactly what you're going for. All right, let's do our art class catchphrase. I make messes, sure do. I make mistakes, but deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome, guys. Big shout out to Ty Conderoga. Thank you for always supplying me with my art supplies, from the, my favorite pencils, which are Ty Conderoga, to my favorite construction paper, which is True Ray. Thank you for making it so I always have tons of art supplies to create lessons for my friends here. And thank you to Art to Remember. Anytime you want to cherish and keep your artwork always, you might want to consider using Art to Remember. It's a website where you can take pictures of your artwork on your phone, upload it to their website, and you all of a sudden have a gallery of your own artwork. That gallery of artwork can then be printed on things from shirts to coffee cups and more. Big shout out, lots of love to Ticonderoga and Art to Remember. Okay guys, we're starting with flour, butter, sugar, a big bowl, a measuring cup, a mixer, and a grown up. All right, pinkies out, people. <clears throat> I pinky promise that I will do my best. I will keep a positive attitude, and I will finish all the cookies off, but maybe share some. Mwah. All right, guys, let's get started. To make our tie-dye cookies, we only need three ingredients, butter, sugar, and flour. What's important though is that our butter has been softened and to do that it's best to just let it sit outside the refrigerator for about an hour. That's what my butter has done. I don't know if it's softened. It feels kind of hard, still kind of squishy. We'll find out. If I decide that it is a little bit too hard to work with, I can just keep it in my bowl for a little bit longer, allow it to get room temp, and then work with it then. You could also pop it in the microwave, but that might make it a little bit too runny. It's important that it's just the right temperature, so make sure you set it out for about an hour before getting started. Okay, you're going to need a third cup of butter. There's two ways to go about getting a third cup. You could, if you have butter that's in a tub, scoop it out, place it inside of your measuring cup, and fill it to where it says one, three. We got that, there we go, move finger, one third. So you could fill it right up to there, or if you take a look at your stick of butter, boom, look at that, it's got all the measurements on there for you. Here it is, one third. What I like to do is take a butter knife, now we know why it's called a butter knife. Right where that line is, I put a little indention. Ugh, just like that. Some people even cut all the way through the paper, which is another way you could do it. I'm just putting a little dent right there, and then I'm going to unwrap the butter. Once I've got the butter unwrapped, I'll be able to see my indention and then cut all the way through. There it is, there's my little dent. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. 
I need this much butter, I don't need this. So I'm gonna keep that in the wrapper and take this butter out. By the way, before you touch any ingredients, make sure you have washed your hands really, really well, thoroughly, since you're going to be making something that people will be eating. My hands are very clean, so I'm gonna go ahead, peel this off. This is the butter that I'm not using, so I'm gonna wrap it back up and set it aside. Now, to get this butter to be a little bit more room temp, I'm gonna take my butter knife and just cut it into smaller pieces before placing it in my bowl. There we go. Get the spatula out of here because we actually won't need it just yet. Now, the next thing we need in our bowl with our cubed butter is some sugar. We need a fourth cup, a fourth cup of sugar. <laughs> it's tricky to be able to see that, there it is. So I'm gonna fill up sugar to right about there. It's important that your cup is on a nice level surface. That way, when you fill it up, you get just the right level amount. So I've got my sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in. I'm going for one quarter cup. Not any more than that. Whoa, let's see. And that was too much sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, it looks pretty good, but I wanna get it just right. So now I'm gonna level it off. Look at that. Now I gotta add a tiny bit more. Ugh. There we go, shake it but don't break it. Looks good to me. Now I'm going to add that sugar to the butter and then I'm going to blend the two together. Pour this in here. There we go and now I'm going to blend them. And when I blend them, I'm using something called a hand mixer. It looks a little bit like this. This right here, this is what I will be using a little bit noisy so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and what I'm doing is I'm going to be doing something called creaming the butter and sugar I want to continue to use my hand mixer until the butter and sugar are nice and fluffy looking here let's get started your butter is room temperature it will probably only take you two minutes to blend my butter wasn't quite soft enough so I actually had to blend it for four minutes as you're blending, you'll notice that it first kind of takes on a, a crumbly kind of scrambled egg texture. Keep blending. As you're blending, the butter will get softer. It will start to mix with that sugar and it will take on a texture that looks fluffy. That's the texture that you're going for. If it gets fluffy right away, that means your butter was nice and soft and you can stop. But if you're like me and your butter was a little bit harder, it will take a couple of minutes, probably around four. Once you have the butter mixed completely, you'll be ready to add the flour. Don't be impatient. Take your time. Make sure it takes on that nice, fluffy texture. Let me show you what it will look like. I just mixed the butter and sugar together for about three minutes. And if you notice, my bowl is different. Yeah, well, the first time I tried it, I turned the mixer on full blast, butter and sugar went everywhere. So side note, use a nice deep bowl. That way it'll really contain all of those ingredients. All right, next up, we're going to add our flour. We need two thirds cup of flour. Making sure my measuring cup is on a nice flat surface. There we go, that looks like two diagonal line three, two thirds cup. Now we're going to stir in this flour. Pour all of that in. I've got my spatula and I'm gonna to start to stir all this together. Now, it's not going to be as easy as when we do something like salt dough clay because the water is what helps make that a little easier to mix. But we're about to do something that we do when we make salt dough clay. And if you wanna learn how to do that, you can just check out some of my videos on YouTube. But we are going to be kneading this much like we do the salt dough clay, meaning we're going to dig in, get our hands in here, and squish all of these ingredients together. But it's butter, and butter is really, really sticky. So you might wanna do a couple of things before you dig in. First of all, once again, make sure your hands are nice and clean. So if you need to go wash them one more time, that's probably a great idea. You'll also want to have a surface to work on that has flour on it. Flour is going to help us not have everything stick to us. So I'm going to put a little bit in my hand. Come on, flour doesn't want to come out. 
I'm gonna put a little in my hand, sprinkle it where I'm working, and I'm also going to be keeping it on my hand. So I'm gonna do it just like that. There we go, spread it out on whatever surface you're working on. And now I'm gonna to start to grab some of my dough so I can knead it together. See how it's very crumbly? I'm just gonna squish it and knead it together. There's one piece. I wanna have three equal balls of this dough. So I've kind of squished this one. It's in a nice ball of dough. I'm gonna reach in and grab another one. That one looks pretty good. It's very crumbly and that's okay. Working over your bowl, just keep squishing it together. Grab some more and just add it to that. The reason it's crumbly is because we used a lot of flour. The reason we used a lot of flour is because we didn't want it to stick to us. So I'm gonna go ahead, squish that together. Notice how I smushed it between my hands to help soften that butter to help it stick. All right, let's see if I can grab the rest of this. This is mostly flour now, so some of this is going to stay in my bowl, and that's okay. There we go. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna leave the rest here. Maybe I can help like squish it back in later, but for now I'm just gonna leave this, and I have three balls of dough. Now friends, if you have three balls of dough that are not all the same size like me, it's okay. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Actually, keep it right here in case I need some more flour for my hands. Now I'm going to dye these three different colors of dough. I actually have four different colors, so you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and break this one apart. Maybe add a little bit more flour and dough to it, squish it in there. And now I'll have enough to make a couple of different colors. If you wanna even these out, you can just take from the bigger pieces and give to the smaller one. Okay, now let's add some of that food coloring. Food coloring might stain your hands. If you're worried about that, you could always wear gloves. Notice how I'm evening out my clay. <laughs> my dough feels just like clay. I'm gonna roll this one around a little bit, grab some more of that, there we go. Now I'm gonna flatten this one. I think I'll dye this one blue. So I'll put just a few drops, a few or two drops. Whoops, three sneaked out. I can always add more, but I can't really take it away if I've added too much. And now I'm just gonna squish it and squeeze it and work that color through my dough. And what you'll notice is it might start to get really sticky on your hands. And that's when you drop it in here, roll it around a little bit, grab some of that extra flour, and that'll make it so it's not so sticky. So anytime that butter starts to feel real sticky, like it is for me, just roll it around in here, grab some more of those ingredients, and then keep on working that color through your dough. We have to do this to each of the dough and what you'll notice when you're working is like I said it's a lot stickier than any of the other salt dough clays that we've made. Now I'm starting to see my color but it's getting sticky so I'm just gonna roll it around in here. All right now that I have this one oh it's already looking tie-dye. I could just leave it like this if you want to you can have that kind of spirally marbled look throughout your dough or you can just keep mixing it. But what you'll wanna do is probably wipe your hands off, get some of this blue or whatever color, food color you have on your hands off, and then move on to the next one. So we're gonna repeat that process. Look how beautiful that marble look is. I kind of like that, so I'm gonna leave that. I've got a towel right here for my hands. I'm gonna do this over my table so I'm not getting a mess all over the floor. And now I'll work on the other two repeating the same process. All right, I've dyed all of my clay doing the same thing that I did with the blue. I just flattened it, and once again, I keep calling it clay, dough. I just flattened it, added a couple of drops of food coloring, mixed it together, and any time it got too sticky on my hands, I just dropped that little piece of dough into the bowl, added more flour, and then it wasn't as sticky. Now it's time to make our cookies. Now I'm going to be baking mine in a toaster oven, a smaller oven. I've already got my oven heating up. It's heating up to 325 degrees. Now I've got a cookie sheet that I've covered in foil. 
because I don't want the cookies to stick to the foil, I'm gonna use a little bit of cooking spray and just add that to my cookie sheet. Now, let's make some cookies. I want my cookies to be pretty small and I wanna have fun mixing the colors together. Again, I have to have my flour on hand because the dough is gonna be pretty sticky. So if you want to, go ahead, get a little bit of flour on your surface again, put it on your hands, and to make cookies, I'm just gonna take a little pinch, maybe of one color, grab another one of this color, and let's start just swirling them together. Anytime they get too sticky, just add more flour. Ooh, it's like a Superman kind of color. I like my cookies, like I said, to be kind of small, so a little bit bite-sized cookies. So that's why I'm only using a little bit of dough. Look at how beautiful those colors are swirled together. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my flour a little bit because it was getting a little sticky on my hands. And each piece that I'm making is going to be about the size of a gumball. Once I've got it, I'm gonna find a beautiful swirl of tie-dye and just flatten it a little bit like that and place it on my cookie sheet. You could try mixing a couple of colors together, like I did two. You could even try three. The cookies are gonna grow a little bit in the oven, so you won't wanna make them too big. You also won't wanna make them too close together. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a great big cookie, which sounds really cool, but you might be a little bit disappointed if that's not what you had in mind. If the flour is making your cookie look a little bit white or too light in color, don't worry because when it comes out of the oven, the colors will look beautiful. I'm just looking for those really beautiful swirls of tie-dye for my cookie and placing it about one finger, maybe even a little more apart. All right, I'm going to keep taking a couple of colors at a time and blending them while you work on your cookies. By the time that you are finished, your oven should be heated up to 325 degrees. It's important that you make sure that you have an adult help you. It's very important that you don't do any baking or use anything in the kitchen without an adult helping you. That's called adult supervision. Make sure you've got that and that they know that you are making some tie-dye cookies. I'm gonna work on filling up my tray with cookies while you work on yours. At the beginning when I said not to put your cookies too close together, this is what will happen. The way to get a blob is to put them this close together. No, 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 Miss Cassie. Make sure they are spaced much further apart than you see me doing here. Using a bigger cookie sheet, making sure to spread them far apart will make sure that you don't end up with a blob. And just in case you missed it, that was preheat your oven to 325, bake the cookies from 12 to 14 minutes. I'll go through the recipe one more time, so if you wanna make sure to grab a pencil so you can have a recipe card, that would be great. Here it is from the top. I have my recipe card right here. Tie-dye cookies. Ingredients. One third cup of unsalted softened butter. One fourth cup of sugar. Two thirds cup of flour. Food coloring. First step, preheat the oven to 325 degrees. First, we mixed the butter and then the sugar. Second step was we added the flour. Then we divided the dough and we added our food coloring. From there, we made our tie-dye cookies, making sure to space them much further apart than I did so you don't end up with a blob. We baked them for 12 to 14 minutes. I hope you guys had fun baking with me. Baking is not exactly my forte or my thing, but it sure was fun trying. If you guys had fun, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, not for more cooking videos, but probably for more artsy kind of videos. See you guys soon.